This video will show you how to use GoalSeq to solve linear and exponential functions. And GoalSeq is an amazing tool. Once we learn it for linear and exponential functions, we will come back and use it again when we get to our finance section, and then we'll probably use it again when we get to our statistics and probability section at the end of the semester. So let's start with an example for linear functions. So the following function shows Tom's grade on a test after he studies for h hours. So his grade g is equal to 3.5h plus 50. So this is a linear equation. We see its initial value is 50. So if Tom does not study, he'll earn a 50 on the test. And then for each hour he studies, his grade goes up by 3.5 points. So the first one says, what will Tom's grade be if he studies for five hours? Well, we can just plug five in for h, but let's set ourselves up for goal seek by actually typing in the equation. We don't need it for this problem, but it'll save us some time if we just go ahead and put in our equation. So we're gonna do equals 3.5 times cell reference the H plus 50. So this tells us if Tom studies for five hours, he'll get a 67.5 on the test. Okay, so now we want to know how long does Tom need to study to make an A? Well, an A is getting a 90. That 90 is the grade. So before we would put 90 in for G and have 90 equals 3.5 H plus 50. And we solved that two-step equation for G, which was fine. But we want to do this using goal seek now. Uh, for linear functions, goal seek maybe doesn't save you that much time, but it comes in really, really handy for exponential functions in the finance section that we're going to get to. So to do goal seek, what we need is our equation. So we actually already have our equation typed in here. So I wanted to go ahead and type it in. So to do goal seek, you start by clicking in a cell with your equation. So I'm gonna start by clicking in that equation cell and then go up to the top where it says data and then what if analysis goal seek. So when this goal seek window pops up, for the set cell, it should be the box where your equation is, which we already clicked on so you don't need to do anything. Then to value tells us what value do we want to get to. In this case, we wanna to get to a 90 because that's going to be an A. And then by changing cell, that is our input cell, which is where our five was. So again, we set the cell with the equation to the value that we're trying to get to, which in this case is the 90, by changing, and then go click on whatever input cell you used for your formula. And when you click OK twice, it does basically a whole bunch of guessing and checking until it finds the best input value to get to the output value that you want. So in this case, Tom needs to study for 11.5 for three hours if he wants to get a 90 on the test. So does goal seek save you time with a linear equation when you can solve it by hand? Yeah, maybe, maybe not, but it's good for us to see it. We do need goal seek for exponentials, so let's go there. So our exponential function says the number of termites t in a house left untreated can be modeled by the number of termites is equal to seven times one plus 0.24 to the d, where d is days since the first bugs arrived. And just looking at this equation, we have seven termites initially, and then we're increasing by 24% each day. It's a lot of bugs. So it says, how many termites will there be after a week? Well, a week is seven days, so we're going to need to put seven in for D. So let's just type in this formula, seven times parenthesis 1 plus 0 .0, or 0 0.24 raised to raised to the seven. And again, I'm using a cell reference because that's going to set us up for success a little bit later on. So we can just plug in seven to see how many termites will there be after a week, which is seven days. And we see there will be 31.55 termites after a week. Okay, so we've got three more questions. Um, sometimes when you're doing these problems with one equation, you don't wanna keep working with the same cell like we did for the linear because then you lose some of your work. So let's actually drag this down drag our equation down three spots so that we have three different places to work with with this equation so that as we do parts two, three, and four, we're not going to be losing the answer that we already got in part one. So the next question says, when will the termites double? Well, we started with seven. If they double, that means we'll be up to 14. So that would be 14 termites over here for T. We cannot solve this exponential equation by hand unless you use some logarithms. And if you use logarithms in high school, that's great, you can use them, but logarithms are not one of our course objectives in this course, and I'm not officially teaching them. The way we are going to solve exponential equations for this course is by using this goal seek function. So I'm gonna click on the second cell where I've got my equation. So click on that equation cell, go up to data, what if analysis goal seek. We want this equation to now be double where we started. 
So we started at 7, doubling is 14. So we want to get it to the value 14 by changing its input cell, which since we drug that equation down, is going to be the one beside our blank, um, or the equation that we're working with, that blank cell. So we're setting our equation to 14 because that's when it doubles by changing its input, which is right beside it. It does a whole bunch of guess and check, and it tells us after 3.22 days, we will have right at 14 termites. If we want to know when there will be 100 termites, again, 100 would go in for T. We can't solve for D without logarithms, which we're not learning, so we have to use goal seek. So we're going to click on the equation that we haven't worked with yet. Data, what if analysis, goal seek. Now we want to set it to 100 by changing its input, which is that cell beside it. And we click OK twice. It goes through its whole rigmarole, and it tells us after about 12.36 days, there will be 100 termites. Last one on this one. It says, when will there be 1,000 termites? So again, we're looking for a number of termites. We cannot solve for D. We have to use goal seek. So we click on the equation that we haven't used yet. Data, what if analysis, goal seek. Now we want to get up to 1,000 termites by changing its input cell. Click OK twice, and we see from day 12, basically, to day 23, we go from 100 to 1,000 termites. That's a lot of bugs. Right, so one more example using goal seek. Let's say that an exterminator comes to the house when there are 1,000 termites and applies a treatment that kills 60% of the live bugs each day. We want to know how many bugs will there be after a week, when will there be half the number of bugs left, and when will there be one bug left. All right, so this one, we, don't, we aren't given an equation, but we can find it. We could say that the number of bugs, we use B for bugs, is equal to our initial value, which is 1,000, times 1, we're killing 60%, so we need to subtract 0.6 each day. So we can come up with our equation which is our number of bugs is equal to our initial value, which is 1,000, minus, or times 1 minus that 60%, which is 0.6, raised to the D. So the first one says, how many bugs will there be after a week? A week is 7 days, so we can type in that equation. 1,000 times parenthesis 1 minus 0.6, raised to the, and click on the cell that's representing days. It's plugging it straight in. You could plug it straight in but this is setting us up for parts two and three. So this tells us after seven days, there is 1.6 bugs left, which is pretty good in a week to get rid of all the bugs. And we've got two more parts, so let's drag this down so we've got two more spaces with this equation that we can work with. So for the next one, we want to know when will there be half as many bugs? Well, how many bugs did we start with? We started with 1,000. So if there's half as many bugs, we're trying to see when do we have 500 bugs left? So data, what if analysis, goal seek, we want to see when are we going to get to 500 bugs left by changing our input. So we'll have 500 bugs. Wow, it's going to kill over half the bugs in the first day. It won't even take a full day to decrease the bugs by half. That's pretty good. And then we want to know when will there be one bug left? Well, we see after a week there's 1.6 bugs left, so it's probably going to be just over seven, but let's find the answer precisely. So data, what if analysis, goal seek, to value 1 by changing its input. So after about seven and a half days, we will have one bug left.